Hey guys, how you doing? It's Will here, uh, back again. Uh, fight card from Brazil, uh, UFC 163 from the HSBC Arena in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, um, where the, the featherweight title is on the line um, when Josie Aldo is challenged by Chan Sung Jung, who replaces that injured or an injured back then, Anthony Showtime Pettis. Um, a few words on last week's card from Seattle for UFC on Fox. Uh, I didn't get to watch the fights until today, actually, a couple of days later, because I was at my mum's uh, 50th party. Um, very impressed with Demetrius Johnson. Very, very crisp, very, very fast. His takedowns were awesome. Um, Robbie Lawler looks a beast again. I uh, wouldn't like to get in there with him. He's coming into his prime. Uh, I thought Melvin Gillard looked exceptional. And then there was the stinker of a fight between um, Rory McDonald and Jake Ellenberg, which really let down everybody because it was just a horrible fight, which I really wish I didn't watch because it was just horrific. Um, but big props to Demetrius Johnson, who I thought looked absolutely uh, awesome in his fight against John Moraga in his title defence. As I say, we're going to start um, away down here at the light heavyweight division. Uh, it's Fran Samoa Barroso against Arnaldo uh, Oliveira. See, there's a lot of fighters in this card that are kind of new to the company and new to a lot of probably fight fans' eyes, a few to me as well. But also, he fights out of Nova Unia, a 15-3 record. And as I say, that's as much as I know. He's got, I think he's got 5-5-5 five and five and five of KOs, submissions and um, decisions. Ednaldo Oliveira, his um, second fight in the UFC, he lost, um, got tapped out by um, Gabriel Gonzaga. I think it was way back UFC 142. Um, I could be wrong with that as well and he's down at his natural weight class of light heavyweight here I'm going to go to decision in this and I think um, Oliveira's just going to get a split decision but I think it could be very close uh, next up we've got um, an ex-ultimate fighter um, participant in Bristol Morundi against Viscardi Andrade say Andrade, don't really know much about him 14-5 um, 4 um, four submissions, 4 KOs and uh, 6 by decision um, say as much as much as I know about, it. I've never really seen him fight. Bristol Morundi got to the quarterfinals of um, Tough Seventeen, where he lost to Neil, uh, Neil Magny. He uh, last fight out, he got KO'd by um, Clinton Hester with um, an elbow. But in the past, he fought uh, one of the best of the middleweight division in um, Jackery Souza when he got to, uh, submitted in the third round uh, a couple of years back. Um, I think Andrade is will win this fight. Um, by decision as well. I think it's going to be a couple of um, decisions to start off the night. If not, it'll be it could get be a submission in this round as well. Um, next up, we've got Rani Yaya against Josh Clopton. Uh, Clopton fought way back in um, 2011, where he lost um, to Steven Seiler, one of the tough finales I remember. He's a six one and one record, uh, and it's a it's a big fight for him here. Uh, uh, coming back into the UFC, facing a uh, Rani Yaya, who is um, a submission guy, who is very, very, very tough um, when it goes to the ground. If you go to the ground, you've got a very good chance of getting submitted with this guy. He's won his last two fights against Masota Harota and uh, Josh Grisby. Um, fought away back in the WEC, as I, was, as I said. Um, beat Eddie Wineland, uh, beat Mike Brown. Um, lost to, to Benavides in there as well. Um, but he looked good in his, his last couple of fights as um, Rani Yaya. So I'm going to pick him to win by submission here um, in the second round. Next up, we're in the flyweight division. We have um, Uncle Creepy, Ian McCall, who's always fun to watch, against uh, Eliade Santos. Uh, I'll talk about Santos. He's 27-7 um, and seven record. Um, I think he fought once in the UFC to Alcantara and lost uh, way back in May. Um, I see that's about as much as I know about uh, Santos. But uh, Ian McCall is coming off two losses to um, a draw and, and two losses. A, a draw with Demetrius Johnson, which I think he honestly should have won. Um, lost the rematch against Demetrius um, in his next fight. And then he, he lost another decision to Joseph Benavides in a, a fight which was quite exciting. It was a, an exciting one to watch. Uh, but ben, Benavides looked better on the night against uh, McCall. I'm going to go Ian McCall by... Um, Decision. I think most of the flyweights go to decision. I think this will as well. Uh, next up in the welterweight division, we've got um, Sergio Moraes against uh, Neil Magny. Neil Magny, uh, Magny was another one that was um, on Tough 17. As I said, he beat Bristol Morundi. He, he won his last UFC out against um, John Manley and looked very good in doing so on decision win. 
um, eight and one record, and he's against a, a veteran kind of Brazilian MMA here in um, Sergio Moraes, who is um, I think I think he fought right about shooter box, um, and he's been kind of affiliated with um, Team Nogueira as well. Um, this is his um, third fight in the UFC. His um, first fight was actually in the final of um, Tough Brazil. I think he, he came in as a replacement in that fight, and uh, he lost by decision to uh, Cesar Mutante uh, Ferrara. And he won his last fight out against um, Rene Fort at UFC 153 by a rear naked choke. Um, I'm finding this a tough one to pick. I like Moraes, but for some reason Magni is calling out to me in this fight. Um, I'm going to go just for, with home home field advantage, and I'm going to go by the submission by Moraes. And if anything, I think he's going to catch him early. But I can I can still see Neil Magni getting a win in this fight as well. So um, I'm just kind of flipping a coin. I'm going to go with Sergio Moraes by uh, submission in this one. Um, next up, we're in the women's bantamweight division. We've got Amanda Nunes against uh, Sheila Gaff. Now Sheila Gaff last time out. Um, not a nice debut in the UFC um, against Sarah McMahon. Came straight out, rushed at a wrestler, a top quality women's wrestler, and basically got put in her arse and then got put to sleep. So um, she'll be looking to kind of look a bit better than she did last time out. Um, Amanda Nunes, uh, 73 record, lost her last fight uh, in Invicta uh, to Sarah Dualio. Um, and her probably biggest fight is when she fought um, Alexis Davis. And uh, she got killed in that one as well. With um, she fought Julia Bud. That was a a a win. A way back in strike force as well. So um, as I say, Sheila Gaff. She's been in kind of the European circuit for quite a while as well. She's gonna want to look to improve in that last performance out because she looked she didn't look good uh, at all. In fact, she never got submitted. She got TKO'd by punches. Um, she was coming off three wins before that against uh, Jennifer Maya, Aisling Daly, and uh, Hannah Sillen. Uh, but she's, she's been in the, Euro, uh, the European circuit for a while but I think Amanda Nunes is going to win this fight and I think she'll win it by um, a decision as well um, so yeah so moving on uh, we've got uh, Vinny Magalhães against Anthony Parosh now we all know about Vinny Magalhães um, he's very 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 talented when it goes to ground on his feet he's got better throughout the years no doubt about it um, but he's a ground fighter and if you go to the ground with Vinny Magalhães, there's a good chance he will submit you. He went to the ground last time um, with a top quality wrestler and Phil Davis. Um, but Phil is a very, 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 very good wrestler and just kind of stifled him out. Got an easy decision victory at uh, UFC 159. Um, a couple of wins before that were against Prokryat, uh, Zayat and Nemkov. The last two being in uh, them one when he was the champion over there. Um, Anthony Parosh. I think it's his first fight in a bit, uh, a little bit, if I remember right. Um, yeah, it was since his seven second KO against Ryan Jimmer way back. It's nearly a full year. In fact, it's over a full year. Um, it will be. It was July last year. Uh, before that, he was he had wins over Nick Pena, Cyril Diabati, Tom Blackledge. Um, but this is going to be a tough fight for him, and he's going to get submitted in this fight. And I reckon it's going to happen in the first or second round. Um, if I had to pick one, it'd be the first round. Uh, so I'm going to go Vin Vinny Magalhães by um, a guillotine choke. Um, next up, we move into the main card. We've got the flyweights. We've got um, John Lineker against the uh, Jose Tommy. Now Tommy is another new fighter. He's actually a 33 and three, so he's 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 been around a while. He's a bit of a, a veteran, I think, of the Brazilian MMA scene. He's uh, replacing Phil Harris here, who pulled out with injury. Uh, and it's 15 TKOs, uh, KOs, uh, 13 submissions and three decisions. So he's not he's not one of these fighters that goes to decision an awful lot. Um, looking at the people that he's um, faced, nobody that pops out. Um, but he's got his big his big chance here in the UFC against John Lineker, who last time out looked uh, pretty good. Um, and there, he's only 23 years old as well, so this kid's going to be around for a while. This is going to be his 28th fight, uh, nine KOs, three submissions, eight decisions, uh, fighting out the Imperium uh, Athletics uh, fighting team. Uh, and his last win was a, a TKO of um, Azamat Gashimov, who he looked really, really, it was a good stoppage. Um, he looked dangerous, and he caught him with something, just put him out. Before that, he had a win against uh, Yurushitani by decision as well. Before that, he had a tough loss to uh, Gaudino, 
by submission as well. So uh, I'm going to go John Lineker here, and I think he's going to knock out Tommy um, in this fight. So I'm going to go uh, Lineker, second round, knockout. Next up, we've got the return of a, a guy who fought for the UFC middleweight title in the Tally's Ladies against uh, England's Tom Watson. Never been a fan of Tom Watson. Um, he's coming off a, a win over Nedkov way back in London, um, way back in February, I think it was. Um, I, before that, he made his UFC and lost to Brad Tavares with um, a couple of wins before that over Jack Marshman and uh, Marilla Hua way back in Bama. Uh, as I say, I'm not a fan of his uh, at all. He talks uh, quite a bit of shit. Um, I think Tally's Lady is coming back into the UFC here is um, going to beat um, Tom Watson. I think he's going to submit him as well. I think he's going to catch him. If not, he'll get a decision, I think, fairly easily. This is his second stint <clears throat> Excuse me, in the UFC. Um, as I say, he fought way back, way back in the day. Um, UFC, the Ultimate Fighter finale, he fought Martin Cabin lost. Beat Pete Sale, um, Floyd Sword, he beat um, Ryan Jensen, beat Nate Marquardt, beat Drew McFedrace before losing to Anderson Silva and Alessio Sakara and was kind of out. He's won six of his last seven fights with the only loss coming to Matt uh, Horwich, who he, he kind of avenged his loss uh, last time out before coming back into the UFC. So I'm going to go with uh, the Tally's Ladies by um, submission. Uh, submission in the I'm going to go a late submission in the third round, eh, I reckon, in this fight. Next up, we have, I think it's Cesar Mutante, um, who's making his kind of big big UFC debut, even though he won his fight, UFC 147, he's making his debut outside of the kind of ultimate uh, tough Brazil finale stuff. Uh, and he's against Thiago Santos, who I've never never seen in my life. Uh, he's a new name. He's a, a new name for me uh, in the UFC. And uh, let me see, I'll go and check out his record here. He's an 8 and 1 uh, guy with most of them coming by KO, so dangerous on his feet. But Cesar Mutante, it's kind of all about him in this fight. Um, it was supposed to be Clint Hester that was in this fight. I was really looking forward to this fight when I heard um, Ferrara um, Mutante was going against um, Clint Hester, but he had to pull out with an injury. Uh, Mutante was. Um, He's kind of like a Vitor Belfort. He's, he's trained a lot with Vitor, and Vitor's kind of took him under his wing and stuff like that. He did it on the show as well. Um, I just think this is a good fight for him to kind of start his UFC career uh, after winning tough. Um, so I'm going to go... Um, I think he'll knock out Santos in this fight. Uh, and... Um, yeah, he'll move on to big and better things in the middleweight division. Uh, the coming event of the night is um, in the light heavyweight division. It's uh, Leota the Dragon Machida, the former UFC... Light heavyweight champion um, against Phil, Mr. Wonderful Davis. Uh, quite an intriguing matchup this. Um, Leo Machido won a stinker last time out against Dan Henderson, which really wasn't very good at all. But before that, he knocked out Ryan Bader, which was um, uh, it was a nice knockout, very nice knockout. And before that, he got submitted. Now, they said he was going to be facing John Jones. It's not good for him to go against John Jones. John Jones will just pick him apart. Um, again, he, he doesn't want to face um, Leo Machida because he will, he, evidently, I think he will beat Leo Machida. Um, I don't think he even really deserved the decision against Dan Henderson. Um, but he's against that very tough wrestler here. We all know what Leo Machida is like. Um, very, very good in his feet, quick at getting in and out, hitting and striking. Very, his karate base is great. It's a, a great base that which he came into MMA with. People are kind of starting to figure him out a little bit now. Um, and he's just kind of hitting and getting out and running and a little bit, and it's I don't like that shit. Just stand and fight. Um, Phil Davis here, he's a wrestler, a big at Penn State. He fought way back in the day, um, and he's a really he's a guy I like watching. I just wish he'd throw his kicks a little bit more because he looks very dangerous when he does that. Did it in his early fights and back in the day against Gustafsson and stuff like that. But he's coming off a win over Vinny Magalhães uh, and Wagner Prado which was a rematch of the eye poke from a way back last year, um, which he won by submission early in the second by Anaconda Choke, which is a, one of the best ones, one of my favourite ones in the UFC. Uh, before that, he lost to Rashad Evans. Uh, finding it hard to pick here, it's, whether, it's just all about Leo Machida, whether he's going to... Well, Phil Davis wants to take Machida to the ground, 
but we all know it's um, Leo Machida is one of the most elusive in the UFC to even get a hold of. Um, this could be another kind of bore fest in this fight. I, I hope not. I'd like to see Phil Davis win, but I'm going to go Leo Machida by unanimous decision. Um, I just think he's going to kind of hit, get in, get out, um, and not really get caught with anything. It'd be interesting to see what happens if Phil Davis gets him down um, in the fight. Um, and if that happens, it could be very, very interesting, and uh, Phil Davis could finish the fight from, from the ground. Um, so, yeah, we're going to move on to the final fight of the night in the, the featherweight division, uh, when it's Josie Aldo against the Korean Zombie. Now, Josie Aldo, uh, his last fight in the UFC was a UFC 156 um, against Frank Edgar, where he looked, he looked very good the first three rounds. I thought he won the first three, and then he lost the last two. If that fight went on any longer... Um, Frankie Edgar, I think, was winning that fight, personally. Um, but he's coming off a couple of wins. Uh, since he's been in the UFC, he's looked fairly good. Um, beat Mark Kominick. He didn't. That was his fight, uh, the fight which he didn't look good, good in. He had a really bad weight cut. Um, beat Kenny Florian in UFC 136. Beat Char Mendes with a stunning KO at UFC 142. And um, then I say Frankie Edgar won UFC 156. Um, Jose Aldo, you just don't know what's coming with Jose Aldo, he's just so explosive on his feet, throws knees, elbows, uh, flying knees, kicks, everything, you just don't know what's coming, um, and he's got a guy here who's going to want to stand and trade with him a little bit, the Korean Zombie, who is um, a little bit of a kind of cult phenomenon, way back in WC where his fights with Leonard Garcia, um, he came in back in the, uh, the UFC, so he did, um, with a, a twister submission over Leonard Garcia, which was Pretty, pretty sick to watch. Then we had um, his KO of Mark Kominick at UFC 140 in seven seconds, which was sick. Uh, and then he had a really, he had an awesome fight against Dustin Poirier, who's one of my favourite guys, um, a way back May last year. So he's been out of the, the octagon for a good time, which is never good. I think it's due to injury. Um, he submitted Dustin Poirier against um, with a dash choke last year. It was a really, really, really nice submission and a great fight in the fourth round as well. Uh, he's going to want to keep it in the ground, uh, the, on the feet and try and um, uh, hurt Aldo, but I just think Aldo is going to finish him in this fight. He's been knocked out before, uh, and I can see him getting knocked out again uh, in this fight, and I'm going to, going to go with a, a head kick knockout in this one um, for Josie Aldo, who's going to probably move up to UFC um, light heavyweight, uh, lightweight division after this, I reckon. I've got a funny feeling he will. Um, he was supposed to face Anthony Pettis, which is one of the fights. That's a super fight, if you ask me, because it's just it's two great fighters with great skill sets going at it. Um, so yeah, but that's it um, for UFC 163 pre uh, predictions. We're going to be back um, in a couple of weeks, I reckon. I think we've got a, a, a few events in August there. We've got uh, the Indianapolis show, and there's Milwaukee, and there's um, Boston as well. Uh, the next one up after UFC 163 is um, UFC Fight Night, Shogun versus um, Chael Sonnen, which which is a really good card. Um, and then I say we've got a run at events there on the uh, the the lead up to UFC 164, uh, which is Benson Henderson versus uh, Anthony Pettis too. So say that's my picks. Um, share the video if you like. Um, leave your comments with the picks that you're picking for this event. Um, come follow me on Twitter, Big Bubba Seven MMA. Uh, I just want to put a th uh, say thank you to the people that watched my video for uh, UFC on Fox and everybody that before that. It's um, it's just something that uh, I like doing and to to get people watching it means uh, it means a lot to me. So thank you very much. Um, and I'll be back in a few weeks. Uh, in fact, it's next week. Uh, a couple of weeks, sorry for uh, Mauricio Shogun here against Chelsea. So I want you to enjoy your weekend, enjoy the fights. Yeah, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with a video for that. Uh, so take care, enjoy the fights, and I'll see you all later. Thank you very much.